guys, it's Tuesday night, and guess what? We're live. Welcome to the second live of 2024. Uh, 20, All right, so oh, let's hope the live doesn't go like that tonight. All righty, so I'm super excited tonight. Uh, we're going to be doing some really cool foils. You guys are just blowing up my email and telling me that you want to see more of this type of content. So we're going to do it. All right. So tonight I am not flying solo, but my other half is not here tonight. He is in Kansas freezing his tail off hunting pheasant. So uh, everyone wish him, um, hopefully he stays warm. So tonight I have the best guy in the business, Mr. Luke Doyle is with me yeah. and he's going to be in the background and actually he's going to be in the foreground because he's going to help me tonight. All right, so say hello to all of the moderators that are out there, my best moderators in the world, Clara, Erica, and Keith. Give them some love. Tell them hello. Uh, guys, honestly, I could not do this without them. Uh, they they really do uh, uh, earn their keep <laughs> for free. <laughs> How about that? Um, okay, so tonight, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to I'm going to show you the foils, and I'm going to show it to you on two different backgrounds so that you can kind of see how the color of the background uh, kind of depends on what foil you're using as what background you're going to go. So we're going to use a white and a black. And I can't, these are some amazing foils that we're going to use tonight. They, they are just incredible. Um, everything that you see tonight, except for the epoxy, you can get on my site, but all of the foil uh, products can be bought at Artistic Painting Studio. Uh, I believe they, uh, the moderators have a link for that. And follow that link and use uh, coupon code RK3. Not RK3 Designs, but RK3 and you'll get 10% off, okay? All right, so let's get started. All right, so what we've done so far is I just had a piece of MDF and I painted it white and black and I used the undercoat and so I only had to let it dry um, for about an hour, hour or two. And then I came over the top with literally the best foil adhesive I have ever used, ever, and I've used a lot of it. It's Jennifer Ferguson from Artistic Painting Studio. It is her signature line. It is her personal line, uh, Artsyville. And the reason I absolutely love this foil adhesive is because it will dry to what we call a tack, all right? Once it dries to that tack, it will never go beyond that. It will never just completely dry. Um, so you don't have to hurry and have a window where you can apply your foil. If you've got several um, projects going on at the same time, you can apply all of your foil adhesive and then you could do it that day or you can do it a year down the road. Uh, it will remain tacky until you put a foil on it, then uh, it's good to go. So we have let this dry. I guess we did this, oh, I don't know, about ooh, four hours ago, and it is ready to go. And this is how I test it. When I want to make sure it's good, I'll, t I'll touch it and it'll pop. It'll kind of make a popping noise and your hand, your finger will come off completely clean and it won't pull off of your substrate. Now, the cool thing about this adhesive is you can put it on anything, guys. Anything, it is going to stick. You can put it straight over furniture, straight over wood. Uh, I actually have done a pair of boots. I've done a hat. I've done my tennis shoes. Now, this particular foil adhesive is not washable, all right? they uh, She does carry washable foil adhesive. So if you wanna do textile, I've got jeans that I've done. I've got shirts. She actually has it so that you can take these foils and put it on a uh, press, a heat press, and do all kind of cool stuff. 
I use these foils on tumblers. Amazing. They're so easy to make an absolutely gorgeous tumbler. I'll have to go get that one that I did and I'll show you. All right, so the two foils that we're using tonight, this is, uh, okay, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's called Imperado, don't know, E-M-P-E-R-A-D-O-R. -E I'm not sure how you say that. Um, that is this foil right here. Look at this. Is that not gorgeous? Oh my gosh. In a minute, Luke, I'm going to have you go over and we're going to show them our, our snake table that we did. All right, so I'm going to put that on a black background. All right, now for my lighter background, and I could have even done a, a tan background for this one, but I had white, so that's what we're going with. This one is called Memphis Marble. Look at this one. Now, the reason I love doing the foils on countertops, a lot of you guys are doing on-site pours where you have a backsplash that's built in to your countertop. You've got an integrated backsplash or an integrated sink. These are the perfect thing because you've got your design on a vertical and all you have to do is put clear epoxy and you can just brush that clear epoxy on two or three times and then you've got a cohesive pattern across your whole um, countertop. I've actually done my whole kitchen in foil, I mean my whole uh, bathroom in foils. It's leopard, ha, huh. who would have thought? My whole bathroom is leopard foil. It is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? All right, good, okay, so I have a new mic. Remember I got a new phone, so I had to have a whole new stuff, so. All right, here we go. First of all, what are foils? Foils are a pattern that has been put onto a carrier. The carrier in this instance is just a clear piece of plastic. So your actual product is this side, the ugly side. You're just seeing through the carrier, you're seeing the design. So when we put this down on to the adhesive, we're gonna put it ugly side down, shiny side up, so that we can actually see. A lot of people wanna put it this way and pull it. You wanna put it this way, all right? So what we did, we rolled on our adhesive. I just used a regular old uh, nap roller. You could use a foam roller. Uh, you can use a paintbrush. I don't advise a paintbrush on a big area because you'll see the brush strokes. But with a, a roller, you're good to go. Like I said, let it dry two to four hours. Overnight is the best. I, I really like to do it overnight because then I have no worries about uh, getting any kind of failure. So I'm hoping that we're going to be good on this because it's really kind of cool in here. It's actually freezing in Texas, y'all. I have two, two shirts on. Look, it is 47 degrees outside and I'm about to die. So... Anyway, I don't want to hear it from all you northern people that are living up there in the sub-zeros. Humans should not be up there. All right, so here we go. We're going to take our foil. You're going to need a little scrubby brush, all right? You don't want it really hard. You want it about a medium um, strength, I guess. You're going to need a soft cloth. This is just one of those microfiber cloths. And... That's about all you're gonna need. All right, so Luke's gonna help me out here. He's gonna move our camera over a little bit. All right, so go ahead and pull it past the edge. All right, so, and then come over. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it nice and tight and go ahead and put your edge down. All right, now what he's gonna do, Luke didn't know he was gonna be ball and told to help me. You're gonna take this rag okay. and you're just gonna very lightly just kind of push it towards me. There you go. Now don't go all the way to the edge and I'm gonna to explain to you here in just a minute why we don't go all the way to the edge. Leave about, oh, I don't know, eighth of an inch, half an inch. All right. Perfect, good. And you don't have to be perfect with this. All I'm kind of doing right now is getting the material on 
the surface. All right. So once we kind of have it laid down, and then look what I want you to do is kind of come close. What I don't want to do is I'm going to come in here right now and I'm going to press it down with my cloth. Okay. I don't want to get really, really hard on that edge because I don't want to have a really hard edge. So we can do some overlapping and we won't see a seam. So remember, anywhere that I have adhesive, it's going to stick. All right. So now what we can do is we can check our adhesion. So I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to check it. Now, see how I'm, I'm having some of it not come up, how it's kind of coming up with my paper? So what that tells me is I need to lay it back down. Okay, and I didn't move it. So when I laid it back down, it went exactly in the same spot that I pulled it up. Now I'm going to get my little scrub brush and I'm going to scrub it in a line. Now, what I don't want to do is scrub like this because if I scrub it in a circle, that those brush marks are going to transpose through my finish. All right, so get my edges really good. And I'm, I'm probably not gonna get my edge real good here because I can't see. All right, so now we're gonna check again. Oh my God, look at that, y'all. Now, I'm not really worried that my edge is not coming out super clean. And I'm not worried. Now, I'm gonna show you this really quick. See that little piece right there, that little white? Okay, if I would have painted my substrate brown, you would never see that, all right? But see this little piece that's left on the plastic? I'm gonna lay it back down. See that little piece? And I'm gonna come back, see how it fixed it? So, very carefully, and I'm, get, I'm not gonna be super, super anal tonight about all of this because really if I were doing this on an actual countertop I would have painted my substrate more of a brown color so none of these little pieces that you're seeing come up you would ever see that but white was what I had so that's what we went with and we're going to be good. Now, what I want you to understand is this is no longer sticky. All right. This is very sticky. This is no longer sticky because I have the foil. And you'll notice that I'm getting almost 100% release. Only thing you don't see these little tiny dots. And really, honestly, like I said, if I were really paying attention, I would have painted my substrate a different color so that I would have 100% release. What I didn't see, what, what I didn't release, you would not see it anyway, because it would be the same color. But going back, anytime I see something that didn't release, we'll take care of any of that. Now, like I said, I'm not super worried about this edge and you're going to see why here in just a minute all right I just, uh -oh, whoops all right i want to talk to y'all about what i just did i'm kind of glad i did it because i wanted y'all to see what happens all right All right, do I have any white up there showing on this edge? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show them how to fix that. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna come around the front. Now, see how I have some white right here? I could go back and have laid that down, but what I can also do is see how I have some leftover salvage? I can go in with that now, and lay that down on top of there. And I can fix that, because remember, this is still sticky. That white is still sticky because that's, there's still adhesive there that didn't stick. Trying to do this on camera so you guys can see is kind of tough. 
and normally you're going to have a little bit bigger edge. I don't think I fully put enough glue on here. Yeah, so I may not have actually done my edges 100%. I was in a hurry. Don't judge me. All right. All right, so you can see how you can use that salvage and you can fix your edges. Again, if this were a brown paint, you would never, ever, ever, ever see that. And honestly, I don't think I really put enough of that uh, glue on my edges. So that's kind of why you're seeing that. Now, what's really good about this foil is that it's very busy. So you don't have to worry about matching up your edges. All right, so now, you can see that our edges are very jagged. I'm not worried about that, okay? Um, now, right here, I accidentally dropped my plastic and it pulled a piece off. So this little piece right here is not sticky anymore. So when I lay my other foil on top of it, that's going to remain because it's already taken up space on the adhesion. All right, so Luke, what we're going to do this time is we're going to actually... Over, over, yeah, over Luke. Okay. We're gonna overlap. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna overlap that seam now. Okay. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna give us a softer seam so that we don't have to worry about having a really hard line. There we go. Now, the mar I will tell you right now, the marble foils are, are a little more difficult to do than some of the other foils that are on. I'm not going to worry about this little white right here. You know, in fact, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way to the edge so you guys can see how it leaves a really hard edge. Um, but the, foil, the, the marble foil, foils are a little more temperamental than a lot of the other foils that she has on her site. I'm going to take you over in just a minute, and we're going to show you the table that we did with the snakeskin. That foil was so incredibly easy, and we do have a full tutorial on our YouTube channel showing the whole process of actually how we built the table and how we did that whole finish, and I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay, so I've got it down. Where's my little brush? Here we go. Get my brush. Now, what I want, don't want to do, I want to scratch, but I don't want to go off this plastic onto this foil. Because if I do, at this point, that foil is very delicate. It can be scratched. So your foils are going to have to have some kind of top coat. If you're not using epoxy, then you need to put some type of uh, uh, protective top coat um, on there to keep them... Uh, protected. All right, here we go. So, do we have any questions yet? No, all the moderators are. Oh, awesome. That's why they're the best in the business. They're so, really like the marble foil. Isn't it amazing? So, guys, let me know in the comments have you guys done foils before? Let me know. Um, I'll, and tell me, I want to know, okay, I want to know the, the most unusual thing that you put foil on. Let me know in the comments, guys. And Luke, just kind of read out some really cool ones. Let me know. All right. I'm going to get this front edge here. Probably not going to get it very good. Guys, don't pay attention to my edges tonight because... I literally probably didn't put near enough of adhesive on there and I can't see what I'm doing. All right, so let's grab this. Here we go. Look at that. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Because. A pair of Crocs. A pair of, hey, that's a good idea. Actually, I know a friend of mine did a pair of Crocs. That was, that's awesome. Cups, ornaments. Cups, yeah, ornaments, done a lot of ornaments. 
Um, okay, so kind of zoom in here. Now, because we overlapped that seam, and that seam, we didn't go all the way to the edge and make it a hard line. Look how this is blending in. Guys, you can't even see where there is a seam. So there is, you, there's no way that you will be able to tell where I did that seam. And I didn't even try to match up my design because the pattern is already so busy. Now, when we did that snake table, I will have to tell you that was a little more intense because we did have to kind of pay attention a little more because it was a very linear pattern. Now, right here, we did get a little close to the edge. So you see how that, li that, that hard line is right there? That's because we went all the way over. Even still, when you're glancing at this, you, you really can't even tell that's a hard line. And I'm just using my finger to go back on some of these little pieces that are pulling up. And again, I can't even reiterate enough. If you were to use a tan paint or, a, or an off-white paint, you would never, ever, ever see any of these little white spots that you're seeing because it would match so well to the, uh, the foil that you're using. That's why your undercoat is very important, what you choose. If I had painted this black, or if I were putting this over the black, you would see the black little poking through. So, so kind of pay attention when you do this, that you try to match your base paint to whatever color is the most predominant in this. But look at this, guys. Is this not incredible? I literally can put a coat of epoxy, and this could be a finish all on its own. So, I love it. I love it. All righty. So, that's on white, all right? And this is the Imperado. E-M-P-E-R-A-D-O-R, Imperador, mm, don't know, foil. So go to her website and that's which one. She has tons of foils, marble foils. Okay, let's do the this one. This one is the Memphis foil. So this is the darker foil. Now, I've got a couple of other. I'm going to go get them here in just a minute. And I'm going to let you see them on the roll. All right, so this is a darker foil. Now, honestly, we did a black background and I could probably get away with the black but if I were really going to be choosy I would have probably picked um maybe a little darker brown all right you know what let's do this this still has glue on it let's overlap so they know what it'll look like over white cool. okay like yeah all right here we go got it all righty You know I was going to put you to work, did you? I did not. Yeah. Happened. Yeah. Don't go all the way to the edge, remember. There you go. All right. Good. Perfect. Oh, good. We have a wrinkle. I wanted to show you all how to take care of a wrinkle. All right. So some of these foils are just more sensitive to others. It's no big deal. But if you see here, we have a little wrinkle. And I'm so glad that happened because I want to show them. All right. So see this little wrinkle? Now, I could really scrub hard and get that wrinkle out, okay? But let's say for some reason, I couldn't get that wrinkle out. So what I'm gonna do is do what we call burp it, all right? I'm gonna bring it up, and what I'm gonna go past where the wrinkle is, and then I'm gonna pull it and lay it back down. All right, that's called burping, because what you're doing, you're letting the air underneath come out and then you're putting it right back down in the same spot. Now it doesn't matter because we already have adhesion onto our board. Okay, so I'll tell you the weirdest thing that I foiled. Um, we did a toilet seat 
which was really cool. Uh, <laughs> I did my ceiling fan, which is, I love my ceiling fan. Um, we did, we've done clocks, charcuterie boards. We've done all kind of fun things. I've done, I did a pair of jeans. I did the pockets of my jeans. Okay. All right, here we go. And get that edge a little bit. Like I said, guys, y'all don't pay attention to my edges because I'm, I can't even see what's up there. All right, ready? Here we go. Holy moly. Look at this. You can't even see. It's coming. And I even have some left over on this foil. Look at this. Can you see those? Yep. See the little bit? Just like I had on this other one. But you can't see that at all. Oh, my gosh. Okay, look, I have a big piece right here. Look right here. See this? See that big piece right there that didn't adhere? I'm going to go down with my finger. I'm going to pull it. See how it came off? Woohoo! Now, I want to show you guys. All right, so can y'all see? I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera. Here's where I had that white, little bit of white left over. Look at the difference. It's a little bit lighter. I don't know if you can tell. But over the white, it's a little bit lighter. Over the dark, it, it's a darker finish, which is what we're going for on this anyway. All right. So we're going to do one more. And then we're going to mix up some epoxy, and we're going to put some epoxy on the top. All right, here we go. So we haven't have we had any really weird things people have put on yet. Hopefully, not too weird. I actually did have uh, a girl do uh, on a leather purse. She did some um, foil, um, leopard foil on the fold of a purse and it was so pretty all right we're gonna hurry up now get this done going right to that edge but not crossing over it all right <laughs> Leslie's asking why you use the kitchen towel on the table Rhonda. that's not the kitchen towel Leslie you're not the boss of me <laughs> that is my microfiber towel my faux finish microfiber towel I can't do anything without her watching me she thinks she's the boss of me she actually she kind of is <laughs> she is kind of the boss of me okay look y'all you cannot see that seam at all it is oh my goodness, look at this. Look, 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 y'all. Is this not stunning? Could you see this done over an old piece of laminate that had an integrated backsplash? Now, I'm going to talk to you how to do your, your inside of your sink here in just a minute. We're going to finish this off just because I don't want to have that much. Okay. All righty. We'll do that. Perfect. Luke, you're going to be a pro at doing foil by the time this is over with. I'm watching that video. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guys, we did this on a dining room table. Um, and it was incredible. And let me tell you what I did do. I did do, I had, I found a table uh, on, I think, Goodwill or somebody. Or maybe somebody gave it to me. And I did a video on it. And we actually did a leopard finish. Uh, we did the texture medium, but then we put a foil over the top of it. And that table brought so much money at the auction for the kids. And it just goes to show you that you can take something very inexpensive and turn it into something that looks so incredibly 
beautiful. Look at this. Is this not amazing? I love it. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about doing the inside of a sink. All right, so now you're looking at a curved area. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You can take your foil and you can kind of put slits in it so that it bends. And then you can do exactly what we did inside of your sink, okay? And just be, just do small areas at a time so that you can get it to bend. Don't try to do a whole sheet because you'll never get it to bend really nice. If you do small areas, you can get it to bend. Now, another thing that we actually do um, is I'll take it and I'll crinkle it up and then I will tap it in the basin area. Now, you're not going to get the marble design, but you'll get these colors. And it really does look cool because your surface is going to have a marble design, but your inside is going to have the same colors because you're, you're tapping. And as you tap, it's coming off the plastic. So you have to continue to kind of move it. So it's kind of uh, modeled, I guess you would call it but it's the same color and it really does pretty. I did a gold, it's on, the, it's on the YouTube. I think I did it with leopard. And then on the inside, I did gold and bronze foils. So I brought all those colors in, but it was actually a different design and it was amazing. So you can still do the inside of those basins. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start mixing up some epoxy really quickly. I've got it part B already in my bucket. Um, while I do that, do you want to take the over there and he's going to take you over there and let you guys see this snake as soon as he cleans all the junk off the table. He's going to let you see the snake skin table that we did and it actually has the gloss UTC. Now for something like this, I highly recommend the matte UTC with a marble because it's really gonna make this marble look very authentic with that matte UTC. You don't have to, you could most definitely do a gloss, but in my opinion, I honestly think the matte is going to be amazing. All right, so he's gonna take you over there. I'm gonna mix up some epoxy and we're gonna go to the next step. So let me know what y'all think about that table. And that table is about, I want to say maybe two years, two years old, I think. Jennifer came down uh, two years ago, and we did that together. Um, so guys, we do offer a class. It's called the Designer Finishes class. And this year it's going to be in April. It's, I don't remember the exact date, April 9th maybe. Um, you'll have to look at my website, but we're going to teach a class. Uh, Jennifer's flying down. It's a three-day class, and we teach foils, texture mediums, uh, dyes, et all of the really higher-end finishes. We uh, teach that, and it is an incredible class. Um, for I, uh, I've known Jennifer for, holy cow, going on 20, maybe 25 years. Uh, she is the person that got me into my faux finishing career. She is a definitely a mentor, and I'm just so um, blessed to have her as a mentor. And I just uh, got invited to a mastermind group. Uh, I'm so excited. I've been trying for four years to get into this mastermind, and I finally got into it, and a lot of it was because of Jennifer. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up just regular epoxy. And if I were doing a white marble foil, I would use the art coat, but this is a, a darker, you're more than uh, okay to use the regular epoxy. And I'm doing three ounces per square foot. Now, 
let me tell you, this is what I do recommend if you did not let your glue dry at least minimum four hours. At this point, if you think your glue may have some more moisture left in it, I would either wait overnight before you did your epoxy, or you could come over with a sealer, in it, like a, uh, an acrylic sealer, a polyacrylic, and you could seal this, then let that polyacrylic really seal uh, dry, and then you can come over with your epoxy. If you come over with your epoxy before you've let all of that moisture out of your glue, because remember guys, it's a water-based glue. Um, over time, it could cause your um, epoxy to get uh, kind of dull and uh, it'll, um, what happened is the moisture is being released. So best practice is to let that glue sit overnight if you have any chance that it's not 100% dry. Okay, we have any questions? Yeah. Uh, was there teams on that table? Yeah, that was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That was five rows of uh, foil. Yeah, but you remember, guys, I had the master here, Jennifer Ferguson, helping me with that table. And let me tell you, is it not gorgeous? It is absolutely gorgeous. I don't even like snakes, and I love that table. Someone here said, I raised 27 boas. The trick is at one time, love the table. Oh, well, you can keep your boas. <laughs> I'll make you a table if you want. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, didn't you used to have a snake? Yeah. Yeah. Nope, thank you. I don't even like lizards. Ask Erica. Okay. All right, so I've mixed up my epoxy, three ounces per square foot. And we're just going to come out over the top. All right, like this. All right. And I'm, can you grab me that torch? Thank you. A little burger. All right, it's pretty cool in here, so I'm going to go ahead and torch it just a little bit. Now, what I advise you guys not to do is use a trowel. Trowel. Did y'all see how I said that? Trial. Trial. Uh, don't use that on a foil because you will scratch it. So use your hand um, and be very, very, very careful because you do not want to scratch it. Once you get your epoxy on there, then obviously you're super, super durable. All right, look at how that epoxy causes the marble just to literally pop out. It is so cool. Again, take your fingers, roll your finger over the edge and push that epoxy up under. So I see a lot of questions um, about edges. So guys, I'm going to tell you how I do my edges, and we never have issues with our edges. Um, don't use a lot of heat on your edges, okay? I use my hand. There's no need to go buy a brush and use a brush. Um, I use my hands. I take that epoxy and I push it over, and then I run my hand, making sure once I break that surface tension of that epoxy rolling over the edge, it's going to roll down nice and easy. It's very important to have enough product on your surface. You don't want to tape your edges if you're only using three or four ounces per square foot. Because what will happen is if you tape your edges and you're only using three or four ounces a square foot, and your epoxy starts to set up, and then you pull the tape, you're not going to have enough product for it to roll over your edge really nicely because it's already started to set up. So you don't have to do that. Now, there are some companies out there that do tape their edges every time, and it's because they're using a thinner epoxy 
and they have to tape their edges or they'll get runoff. All right, and that's fine. You can tape your edges if you're using more product. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you're using stone coat and you're using it at three ounces per square foot, then you don't want to tape your edges, okay? Uh, also, once you get that, that epoxy starting to flow over your edge, don't overheat it with a torch because what's going to happen is when you heat epoxy, it gets very, very thin. And then it's already thin here because it's a vertical surface. So if I, if I heat it even more, then it's really going to be thin. So, all right. I think I have a booger up there. So I'm going to tell on myself, I didn't use a clean bucket. Um, I used a bucket that had some boogers in it, but, you know. All right. Have you seen an entire kitchen with foils before? Yes, I have done an entire kitchen with foils. What type of foil was it? It was a, uh, you know what? I If I can find that video, I will. It was just a very, very soft gold and bronze marble. I don't even know if she carries it anymore, but it was, um, it had gold and bronze and then almost a black and it was very kind of melded. It was really, really pretty. And I did the entire kitchen uh, and it was stunning. And then they did their little drawer pulls and door pulls were a gold, like a, a antique gold. It was so pretty. So yes, you can do an entire kitchen that's what I was, that's what I really want you guys to understand is this is an easy way to get an incredible, realistic looking marble. And I'll tell you one thing else. If I were doing, say, a bathroom vanity, all right, a small bath, and some vanities are no bigger than this, I could actually do a, use the amazing quick coat on this. And I could do a flood coat or I could do UTC in four hours. And I can do a whole bathroom in a day. So it's just, it's just an incredible way to be able to bring in a realistic pattern. Um, I, I just, I love this. Now, if this were my countertop and it were going to be in a high traffic area, let's say this was my, my kitchen and I have 10 kids and they came in every day and threw their books across the, the table and all that. It is a high, high traffic area. I'm telling you, I would put two layers of epoxy, okay? I would put this, let this dry, and I would come over and put another layer of epoxy. Technically, you do not have to do that. I could take from this step, I could let this dry, and I could tomorrow put the ultimate top coat if I wanted to, or I could leave it like this. You don't have to put two coats, but I'll just tell you, on your edges, on your sides where your epoxy is already thin, if it's a high traffic area, just take the extra time, take the extra money, go to the extra step, and protect your edges. Okay, so any questions? Yeah, uh, how would you go about uh, charging the jewelry for it? Something like that? Uh, that is a... Fabulous question. So what you have to do, just like you have to figure out the cost if you're doing a regular epoxy uh, countertop, you have to figure out your cost, your cost of your materials and your time. Okay, I know how fast I can do something and I know what my time is worth. Um, so you just need to figure out, because every, every foil is a different price. So it's, it's hard for me to say, okay, you need to charge $50 a square foot because I may be using a really expensive foil and then I'm not gonna have a good profit margin there. So figure out what your cost of your material is, the, your time that it's gonna take. And at that point, you can decide, you don't have to charge by the square foot. What I usually do is figure out the job it's easier for me to just divide it out into a square foot. People like to hear that. Uh, plus in Texas, if I break my invoice down into labor and material, I have to charge tax on my material. So I just give a turnkey what it would cost. Um, so I know I really didn't give you a number and it's impossible for me to give you a number, um, but honestly, 
I can do this very inexpensively because I can do it so quickly. All right, so take that into consideration. I can do it very, very quick and I don't have to go back as much because I'm not technically applying a color coat. All right, okay, hope I answered that. All right, so what do y'all think? What do you say? Let's do, y'all want to try to do something else to it? What could we do? I don't even know what we could do. We could, yeah, I guess there's really nothing we could do to it at this point. We could. I could spray some Montana marble spray. spray oh, let's, so only reason Luke said that is because I have a can of marble spray sitting here. Okay, so let me tell you really quickly, I'm going to show you this other marble, and I'm going to show you actually what we did uh, on that marble, and I'll show you a stool that we did. Uh, let me find it. Let me see. Okay, so let's show them this. All right, so here is a foil stool that I did. Okay, now it doesn't look like it, but what I did here is I laid the foil, and then I went over the top with a very, very, very translucent white epoxy. I tinted it so translucent that you can barely see it. So what it did, I'll show the I'll show you the original, the original foil. I think this is it. So see, no, this isn't even the original. No, that's not one. Okay, this isn't it. But what it did is it kind of toned down because the original foil, the gold was really gold. And I, I wanted to kind of tone it down. So I went over the top of this with uh, the epoxy tinted very, very lightly with white. And that took this whole piece down to be very subtle. So that's one thing that you can do. Now here's another foil. We're fixing to shoot a video uh, tomorrow. Look at this foil. This is called Coral marble look at this y'all so i'm shooting this video tomorrow and it'll be on our youtube channel and it's going with a rock edge and i'm going to be doing some really fun things with the rock edge so you guys don't miss out on that video because that's going to be a really in-depth uh, tutorial on this all right so let's take the montana marble spray Okay, so I am actually out of the white Montana marble spray, but even Leslie doesn't know this. I just ordered 350 cans of this. So, um, like tonight I ordered it, Leslie. So I'm going to be getting a phone call here in a minute. Uh, anyway, so we should have all of this restocked. I think we have black and silver on the site right now, but we don't have any of the white, but we'll be getting it. All right, so this is like the adult silly string now I can do two things I can let this cure and then do this you're gonna and then put another flood coat or I can do it while the epoxy is wet let it dry and then put another flood coat tomorrow the difference is if I spray it on wet epoxy as the epoxy moves it's going to have a tendency to kind of break the little veining because the epoxy is moving if I wait and allow this to dry, what I would do is then come back and scuff sand it. Then I would spray the Montana marble spray. I would let that dry and then I'd flood coat it. All right. But you don't even have to do this, guys. We're just doing it because I'm trying to kill some time. Okay. So here it goes. This is the white Montana marble spray. We're going to come up nice and high. So what this is doing is just kind of making those veins kind of pop. Now with that Montana marble spray, you want to spray and then kind of flick your wrist. Now that looks cool as heck because it looks 3D. When you put that next layer, okay, that's good. When you put that next layer of epoxy on here, it's literally going to make that look 3D. So maybe not so much on this because it's a very stark white, but I actually have a marble back there that's more, it's a lot more white 
that I bet that would look incredible on. So I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of heat. How fun is that? Now you could also come over here. Uh, I could mix up some diamond dust, let it kind of thicken. And I could come over the top with some diamond dust or, I mean, there's just so many things that you could do. Um, let me run, look really quickly and see if I can get those other foils. And I'll show you. There's a foil. All right, here's this. All right. I found that foil that I uh, I did that kitchen in. All right, so here is that foil that I did the kitchen in. Somebody was asking me. I was thinking it was black, but it's more of a gray. Isn't that pretty? All right, so that's one. That's, and I don't remember the name. It's just, I have a different sticker. It just says Marble 5 on it. Um, okay, here's the one that's really pretty. This is a, if you wanted a whitish color, this is that one I did on that stool. See how the gold's a little brighter? And that's the one that I put the white on top of. And like I said, all of these are available on Jennifer's website. Don't forget to use coupon code RK3. Um, this, if you guys watch that, that one video I did where I did a geode, I took a shortcut and I did a geode using a foil. This is the foil that I used. Look at that. Can you, I could see this in a bathroom, like a, a real high-end powder Do room. Do you have a piece of that in your bathroom right now? Yeah, that's the one I did the foil, the, the geode on. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go get that in a minute. But isn't that pretty? Hooey! Pretty, 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 pretty. Now, I don't know if I'd want that whole thing in my kitchen, but can you imagine an island? If you did an island like that? Now, look at this one. Look at this one. This is like, a, reminds me of a cork. Like a cork finish. Isn't that pretty? Almost like a leathery. Isn't that pretty? Love it. So, guys, I can't even tell. She has got literally hundreds. I'm going to show you one more. It's my one of my very favorites. This I actually did in a bathroom. And I painted. I, I went. I did a, a kitchen uh, bathroom. Okay. Then I went and bought a real ornate cheap or it wasn't cheap, I bought it at Goodwill. I got it cheap, but it was a very expensive one. And I spray painted it black. And then I came back and I put uh, the, the gold foil. We have a, just a solid gold foil. Uh, I just hit it with a little bit of adhesive and then I put that gold foil on there to kind of give it a, a I don't know, a, a accents. It was absolutely incredible. All right, let me show you one last thing. This is the geode that we did. This is, and guys, I'm not a geode person. I don't know how to make a geode. I was just trying to show y'all. If y'all want to know how to make a geode, hit up, hit up Erica. She knows all that. But look at this. This is made out of a pink foam board. All right, look at that. And these, I didn't even have gold. This is just glass, and I spray painted it gold because I was too cheap to go buy gold ones, so I just spray painted it. And isn't that pretty? And so we did our edges with Bondo. And this is how I did that mirror. Isn't that pretty? So pretty, painted it black, then I just came over the top with the gold. Love, love, love. So easy. Can you imagine doing one the size of your sofa, like behind your sofa? Man, all right. 
Okay, guys, well, as you can tell, I am so excited with foils. I absolutely, absolutely love foils. Uh, there's, it's just endless what you can do. So if you're interested in, in kind of taking your epoxy to the next level, join us on our uh, designer finishes class. It is incredible. We do stenciling. Um, we do texture mediums, uh, uh, embossing, all of that. And we mix it in with our epoxy and create some amazing finishes. Okay, so do we have any announcements? We're doing free shipping, guys. All orders over $100 ship for free. We do same day shipping as long as you call us, order online before noon. Then we're able to get it out the door. I guess that's it. All right, guys. Thank you, man. We went almost an hour. So thank you for sticking around. I appreciate it. Thank you to all of our new sub subscribers. Guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please, 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 please do that. We are at, what, 83,600. I want so bad to get to 100,000 before summer. And let me promise you this. Listen to this, and you can mark my words. When we hit 100,000, I'm going to have one hell of a giveaway. I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to have an amazing giveaway. So if you are not a subscriber, subscribe. Because once we hit that 100,000, we're going to have an awesome, awesome, awesome giveaway. Okay, I guess that's it. All righty, so next week, we're going to have a guest come in and do our live. And we still have, I think, one spot left in our January um, pro class. I think we have six spots left in our March pro class. So guys, these are filling up quick. I think we have eight spots left in our Fe February 101 fabricators class. So if you have any questions on our classes, give us a call. Guys, we've been doing classes for almost eight years now. And we've done probably close to 700 students have gone through our program from literally all over the world. And the 2024 class is going to blow everyone's mind. We have changed things up. We're adding some new, really cool designs, um, a really cool contest for our students where you can win some really cool things too. So let us know if you have any questions, just give us a call. All right, see you next week, guys. Love you. Remember, don't be scared. Move forward.